How you guys doing today? Somebody asked me a couple weeks ago, I don't know, maybe even a month ago, about a, a do's and don'ts for uh, keeping garter snakes. So I figured since it's cold out and I can't do any herping videos, that I would do something uh, to kind of help people. So um, I'm not a, an expert. I've been doing it for five years, keeping them. And uh, I've always loved snakes, but uh, keeping them and uh, breeding them is something I've done now for about five years. So uh, this year I've had six litters, healthy litters. I lost one litter this year um, due to something with the snake. Um, but uh, yeah, so as you can see right here, um, these are my uh, breeder females. They're uh, actually each one is gravid right now. Um, you have the uh, Exantix, the Snow, um, Hyper Albino, and then just your regular basic albino. Um, and their father to these are e is either a melanistic or a, a hyper albino like this female here. Let's go. Hopefully you guys can see. It's kind of dark, so let me turn the light on. Just gonna watch them. I'll turn the light on and get some better. Maybe that's a little better. All right, so the do's and don'ts. Um, I guess the first thing I get from a lot of people, especially people wanting to buy a garter snake, is can they keep multiple snakes together? And uh, the answer to that is yes. You can keep uh, multiple snakes together. Um, but, and now this is a but, and you have to understand if you keep a lot of snakes together, um, male and female, of course you're going to be looking at probably having babies because, you know, that's what they do. And uh, regardless of how you keep them, they will end up mating and you will have a lot of babies on your hands. So if that's not something you're looking to take care of, then uh, I would recommend keeping just females or just males. Um, in this case, most people go 40s. Uh, this is a 40. And uh, I can keep these four snakes in there pretty good. Now, normally I don't keep more than two, especially breeder females but these guys just got done uh, eating and stuff, so two of them are gonna be moved out. So, um, another thing I guess that would be uh, highly recommended is using front enclosures like this if you can get a hold of them. Um, to me, I find this so much easier than my tanks to my right, which I'll show you guys at the end here. Uh, anything from the top, because these guys are escape artists. They can get out of almost anything, especially when they're little and uh, especially uh, multiple snakes together and they'll climb in, they'll get through little tiny cracks and gone forever. And if you're lucky, you might find them, but not, not, not normally. And trust me on this, it's happened to me. So make sure if you do have a top loaded tank, like this 20 I have to my right, and I will show you. Put some rocks on it, put a brick on there, make sure you have latches to keep it down, keep it sealed. Uh, don't put anything around the sides to help them be able to climb up to the tops of it or they will get out and you will lose your snake. Uh, the other do is, I recommend this to most people. When you get a baby snake, handle the snake a lot. So you can do this. All right, and you can check your snake out without it going spastic on you, and you can't see what's going on, if she has any anything going on, any lesions, because, you know, in tanks and things that they climb on, they, they do cut themselves and, uh, when you do feed them and you get a little food fight. So you always want to just make sure you can handle your snakes and make sure they're not going to run off on you just for an instant just to check them. And uh, their disposition will be really good. 
So I recommend handling the snakes when they're babies as much as possible. Let them let them know that you're not uh, anything to be afraid of. You know, this this I got this Azantix girl here. She was uh, really small, and uh, she uh, was is, is still somewhat spastic. She's getting better. She's getting better. And this will be her first litter. And I'm excited to see, if hopefully, the babies all come out like her. And I have this big, older albino girl here, who this is her first litter for me. And she happens to be still somewhat suspastic. And she just needs a little bit more, you know, care. But she's, she's good. She's doing good. But... That's something I find very important. Is make sure you handle the snake. Uh, make sure they know when you're feeding them. When that cage opens, they know your hands doesn't mean uh, run and hide or a, a muscular. Let's uh, make sure that uh, they know that that, that hand's going to take care of them. Also, I would recommend making sure you, you do your, uh, your read up on your snakes. Depending on what types of snakes, it could be plains garters, it could be wandering garters, California red sided. Uh, Eastern garters. Just make sure you do 100% uh, research. Just read up on the snake. Read up about where they're found, what they like to eat, uh, where in the United States they're at, uh, how they're distributed, and make sure you have all the information that you know. So, the food is extremely uh, important to understand. So, a lot of people. Uh, if they buy a snake, I've had a, I just had a person a couple of weeks ago, about a week ago now. She, her snake was sick. She bought a, a het albino um, snake from me and the snake was sick and it was going into some sort of little convulsions. And I asked her if she was using, uh, what, what was she feeding it? She said worms. And I said, what kind of worms? And she said, the worms I get from uh, Walmart. Well, they, they, they happen to be the red wigglers and uh, they're, they're poisonous for, for garter snakes. So those are the little things like she never asked me about care and, and I kind of take responsibility for that. I should have, she was a new, a new handler and I, I should have made it clear when I said worms that she used Canadian night crawlers. Um, I always recommend tilapia. When they're babies, you can do guppies. Uh, uh, I do tilapia just once in a while and uh, it's more of like a treat for them. It's not something I, I like to give them often. Um, I kind of like mix their food up. So mostly these guys are all on pinkies, but they'll eat anything, uh, especially when they're grabbing. <laughs> they'll eat, they'll, trust me, they'll eat anything. Um, and now let's talk substrate. Substrate. I use uh, paper towels. I uh, know I know a lot of people it's you know a lot of people like to use repti chips and a lot of people use uh, cypress bedding or maybe even uh, aspen bedding um, through my experience the way these guys eat even if you feed them uh, with tongs or in a bowl or on a plate they like to drag their food around and they will ingest the bedding and uh, once they have that blockage, um, it's nothing you can do. It's pretty much a dead snake. So I recommend paper towels. I know it's not the most, it's not the prettiest, it's not the best thing in the world for looks. Now, you know, as a snake gets so these guys right here, I could go rep the chips as they get older, create a nice little uh, setup for them. But, uh, I just like it this way so I can make sure everybody's make, going to the bathroom. I can clean clean their poop, uh, clean their tanks up from their poop real quick so they're not consistently going through their poop. And uh, that's very important. Um, so if you have multiple snakes in a tank and you have bedding and the snakes are pooping, and you'll find that these snakes and snakes in general, they poop right on top of each other. And there's a thing called hookworm that a snake can get from going through another snake's feces. And when they get that hookworm, that hookworm is a parasite that gets into their intestines. And that in eats anything that they eat. And they get nothing from their food. And they will die. 
and I have had it happen in my early years until I found out why it was happening. And uh, now I, I know that you've got to keep the tank as clean as possible. So if you have bedding, make sure you change that bedding out regularly. At least sift through it, clean out their poop, uh, clean their hides, give them fresh water. Uh, make sure you take care of that stuff or you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt. And if you take them to the vet, which I pretty much take my snakes, especially my breeders, I take them to the vet and I have them dewormed all the time, especially when I have males and females together. Um, it's not cheap, a couple hundred dollars a clip. But if you want to have, you know, beautiful snakes and enjoy them, uh, you want to you make sure, especially if you keep them together, you take care of them. Uh, let's see, outside of that, I mean, it's your normal husbandry. Uh, it's your upkeep, your fresh water, your food, um, your heat source. I use just basic regular light bulbs. One side of the tank, the other side cool. Uh, things to climb on, in this case, they don't have a whole lot, but on the tanks to the left, to the right of me, there's stuff to climb on for all the other snakes I have. Um, you can use bins. I have a bin system. If you guys watched my video before, you'll see that my bin system is, uh, you know, I feed them right in the bins too. Uh, these guys will probably get split up in the next couple days and two or three of them will at least go into a bin um, just so I can monitor them. And then I do, I do like them giving birth in the tank though. I don't like them giving birth in the uh, bins because the little babies are slick and they'll get out the tops of the bins. And uh, I've had them escape and then had to catch baby snakes everywhere. So, um, I guess that's about really the, 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 the really, really, really do's and don'ts. As I said, escape artists is, is so important. You use a tank with a cover on the top, make sure it has the clips, or make sure you put some rocks down on it or a brick or whatever. And I'll, as I said, I'll show you mine. And then just monitor them, take care of them. Uh, understand that there, that snake's going poop right there. Understand that uh, they're extremely active for the most part. They're always going to be out. They're going to be exploring. They're going to be laying out. You can enjoy enjoy that. Um, one, two, three snakes. Um, you can mix the species together. You could put planes in with easterns and easterns in with, you know, uh, red sided or California garters with plains garters and easterns with. Uh, I don't know, Santa Cruz garters, doesn't matter. They're, they're all communal and they all lay. The only ones you don't want to do it with is the wandering garter snake. The wandering garter snake happens to be, uh, at times, can be cannibalistic. And I have had that happen. So, and at a bit, very, very early age, too. So, so let's do a couple of close ups on some of the tanks that I got going on. And you guys can see how you saw that. And there's. Old Faithful over there. She had two litters this year. She's 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 retired for the next couple of months. She probably won't, I won't breed her out again until probably April, maybe May. Got we got our babies in there, and you guys can see how I have it set up. It's open, a little bit of cover. These are all babies that are sold. These are from the snow. Uh, they're all 100% uh, het for snow and these guys are sold and uh, we'll be shipping them out right after the holidays and we got some more babies now these tanks I just actually cleaned and they're already messed up and that's something that you'll have to get used to if you keep garter snakes so make sure you you know this because you're going to go crazy. Paper towel city. Buy them in bulk. Here's some wanderings. There's one back there. There's one there. One crazy one here climbing. And here's what I was talking about. Here's my, here's my safety catch, right? A couple rocks on the sides. I'll keep them from getting out. I hate these tanks personally, but you know, 
I have a billion of them, so I got to use them or my wife goes crazy and she yells at me. Oh, there's an African bullfrog. It's nuts. Some more snakes. Some more snakes down there. More down here. These are all juveniles. These are all going to be for sale. Um, or I'll make keep a couple. These guys in here are het albino. These guys in here are some normal and then some het albinos. Uh, this guy right here that's popping out. He's an eastern. It's 100% het albino. And uh, he, he's really pretty. And we've got my sub-adult. A couple sub-adults down there. A little Pac-Man frog action. So, you can see, it's nothing crazy. I mean, I have an upstairs too. So, you know, you got, what's that there? There's my euthristic eastern female. Another plane's in there. I think. I think one of these is my. Yeah, they're not coming out. They're hiding. But in there's an eastern. Let's see if I can get them out. Oh, let's see. There's a male and female in here. Oh, there, there. There's the male. They're all wrapped up in their little log. And they're happy. Happy little world. But she's gravid. So I hope. And uh, that's the dad. So they'll all be... They should all be just like him. Which is going to be awesome. That'll be my first eastern litter in a long time. So. Anyways. That's really... Oh, sorry. That's really about it. Just make sure you... Uh, you see what I was saying about snakes getting away? You guys see this? You see this big female? Now I gotta reach in there and lasso her up. I left the tank open for a second and here she goes. And now this should be fun because she she's all wrapped up in there. Here we go. Let's see, see, they're smart. They're smart and they're fast. And the minute you think, the minute you think you can walk away for a second, is the minute one that gets out, gets out the, uh, the cage. And then you're screwed because then you got to do that. So there you go. Live and learn. Any questions, any concerns about anything, just please, in the comments, leave anything for me. Um, if you guys want to see more feedings or anything like that, who watch this stuff, let me know. And I'll... Uh, I'll try to uh, put that up for you guys. Hope you guys had a good holiday and uh, let's uh, have a nice 2021, maybe masks off, right? All right, take care, guys.